Welcome to Alive in Writing, a podcast on troubleshooting life as a writer. I'm Shatona Havoc. I'm April Heyman. And I'm C.R. Rowanson. We're here. We're alive. And we're writing-ish. So, writing-ish. So guys, I have this problem. There's this guy. He's short. He's bald. He's kind of chubby. has a New York accent. He kind of looks like Danny DeVito. And he's following me everywhere and looking over my shoulder when I write. Call the police. Wait a minute. Is he, does, he, does he have a cigar? He does have a cigar. How did you know? I've seen him over your shoulder. <gasps> it's awful. Call the police. <laughs> and you know what? They wouldn't listen to us. They couldn't see him. That's right, because he's my inner editor and not a stalker. Oh, oh, it's dear. kind of the same sometimes. Same smell. Same smell. They all stink. <laughs> <laughs> You actually had me concerned for a second there. Never mind. I'm yeah. just... Oh, so <laughs> you should know he better. Doesn't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, moving no on. Interest law. Yeah. <laughs> she's got she's got mental issues now from this thing, <laughs> and you just made them worse. Thanks. Yeah, no kidding. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna be scarred for life. So, he's your inner editor. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's oddly specific, isn't he? That's your, very, very. That's a little weird. Anyway, so what are we talking about with the inner editors? Well, we all have one, unfortunately. Um, even Mr. Stephen King apparently has one because he um, he gives a pretty clean copy, I guess. Yeah, he does. He's supposed to have the cleanest copy in the business from what I've read. But he still has a, re- a real editor, so, right. you know. So the inner editor is that little voice in your head that lets you know that what you just wrote was wrong. And they consistently does it over and over again as you write and makes it harder and harder to write. Yeah, I would be careful with that because you said lets you know as though they're always right. That's a very <laughs> good point because they aren't. They just tell you that it's all crap over, yes, and, over, over and over and over again. again. Um, yeah. I'm going to start singing. Okay. I, I was good. I didn't. So nope. basically, so basically an inner editor, their job in their minds is to ensure that you don't progress. Well... They ensure that you don't feel good about it. There's that for sure. <laughs> well, it can certainly make you so this is a slow feel good down. Post? I'm sorry. This is a feel good post then? No, never no it's not a feel good post, <laughs> unfortunately. No, they're usually telling you to rewrite it. And you slow down and you start feeling worse about what you're writing. Okay. Yeah, for me. So it's... what's his name? Yeah, does okay. he have a name? Clarence? Eustace? I like Eustace. Eustace. What? Scrub? <laughs> Why would I name him? You I'm trying to get that. rid of him. <laughs> come on, that was good. That was bad. All right. <laughs> that was how many did we work with? You know, I mean, come on. So, okay. You've got this guy who's bugging you. Mm-hmm. So, is this why I don't have all of spilled ink? Yes. That would be why bad I don't have, I Bad know. guy. Okay. We are going to have an exorcism. <laughs> 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 Gotta have an exorcism. <laughs> Kill that sucker. Okay, so wait a minute. What did you... You know, that's the problem with inner demons. They don't exercise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <sorry>. gosh. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> so no, he doesn't. So, so flabby writing is because you didn't exercise your... <laughs> inner demons, yes. <laughs> okay, then. So I'd love to hear how you shut your inner editor off because... Um, uh, Right now, it's really me just working in spite of my inner editor, and it's it's exhausting. That's a good question, actually. It sounds like you don't have an easy answer for me. There is never an inner... There's never an inner... There's never an easy answer for insecurity, and that is exactly what your inner editor is. Well, wait a minute, though. Insecurity. It's in, so you can put... Uh, no, don't no. Don't <laughs> just... That's not how it works, unfortunately. I know. I know. I'm very trying. (laughs) So that's really funny because I don't know if any of the listeners or you guys have ever seen Red Dwarf, but uh, the way you're talking about this, it's an old British comedy show that's fantastic. There's an episode where one of the guys starts having hallucinations that become real because he got some weird special space bug. Uh, and he talks about how his friend always had this theory that inside you, you have two people. You have your confidence and your paranoia. And confidence is the guy who just says, hey, yes, you're awesome. You're amazing. You're dead sexy. Everybody loves you. And then you have your paranoia who's like, no, you're stupid, pathetic, and useless, and everybody hates you. <laughs> <laughs> 
And those two become real in the episode, and it's it's hysterical. That's... <laughs> so we need to take the the the, the mean guy. And send him to the self-editor internment camp? Yes, that would be wonderful. You let me know how to do that. And I'll, I'll, figure, I'll figure that out. We'll, we'll just inter him until it's time to do the real editing. So do we not know how to shut the editor off? I, well, mean... I think that's going to be very unique to each person. I think the, the key is to have ideas for how to try it and then go for it. Because, I mean, a lot of things that a lot of other people, like me, I just... I just I'm a, it's like I'm a mom, okay? And I'm a mean mom. And so when that ed editor starts coming at me, I do. I just say, hey, shut up. Go away. And it kind of works because I'm used to doing that with the kids because I'm a mean mom. Um, can we go on now? Um, I am, I'm not sure I understand the words that just came out of your mouth. You can do that to your inner thoughts? Yeah, I can. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I, wish that, I wish I could do that. Um, no kidding. Man. Uh, getting feedback from me helps tremendously. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. It doesn't help while I'm writing, but when I get to a point where I can't not listen to the inner editor, getting feedback from someone that I trust and they can give me either if, if it's good feedback, yay. If it's not, at least I know where I can go back and fix things. Right. And, and cheerleaders can definitely help with that too. And I wanted to bring up, you had mentioned before, it's it's primarily insecurity. So when we were talking about stuff earlier, I, I mentioned that I haven't been, I need to be getting feedback and they kind of, these two kind of got mad at me because I haven't been giving them anything to give me feedback. And then I suddenly realized why for reasons I can't fathom, I had recently gotten really insecure about sending them my stuff. Because I was just like, oh, they're too busy. They don't need to be spending time on this. They have their own stuff that they're struggling with. And I just went in this big old vicious circle until they kind of both shook me and said, what's wrong with you? Send it to us. <laughs> his, his cheeks are, are slightly less hand printy red right now. But um... <laughs> we smacked him around a little bit. Bruises fade. Sorry, we do People not have physical abuse in any fashion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But it's great on paper. <laughs> that's the beauty of fiction. Oh, boy. But that's something I wanted to point out is it's it can be really easy to slip into that cycle of um, of just being super self-conscious and not trusting that you have people that would actually want to see what you're doing. So why don't you, I mean, why don't you fix it as you go? I mean, you're, you're writing, you're typing, everything's oh, why going. why should we shut off And the then, yeah. And the inner editor, what if, why shouldn't you listen to them? I mean, this is part of who you are. I mean, because you're catching editors. I, well, I know that. <laughs> okay. This is, this is, this, I've got this one. Okay. Because this one I know. Inner editing is incredibly inefficient and expensive. Because let's face it, you're going to get done with this book someday. I hope April someday. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're going to get... You too, yeah, right. Yeah, I know. Shards of sand. Just, I know, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But when you get done with that book, I don't care how perfect you made it. Either your publisher or yourself as your publisher, depending on how you publish, is going to have an editor to do all that. So you just spent all that time and stress and money, because time is money, <laughs> yeah. and you know, or... or Apple crisps at Denny's exactly. not working on it because you kept doing it over and over when guess what? You're gonna it's gonna get done all over again. Not to mention you're probably gonna have several drafts before it even gets to the editor to begin with. Exactly. Right. So why would you let it I mean sometimes, you know, I look at it and I go, This is garbage. I put it aside and I work on something else for a while. I wake up the next morning, I reread it. Almost always, I really like it. Or I go, oh, I just need to add this and this and this, and bam, we got this. You know, it's not quite as funny as I want, but I can put a line here, you know, and it's done. It's rare that I look at it and go, yeah, it really was garbage, and chuck it. Right. You know, that's rare. But if I let myself get in that moment, it ain't going to happen. That makes a ton of sense logically and professionally and all that kind of stuff, but that doesn't seem that doesn't that doesn't work uh, emotionally and mentally because. <laughs> well, I, some I of know. us have no emotions, though. <laughs> well, 
That's sociopathy. And <laughs> well, we should be concerned about that. Yeah, anyway. I know, I know, but so but, far it hasn't, you know, meant hasn't that it interfered with her life at nobody's all. Nobody's died yet. <laughs> this, yet. Nobody she cares about. <laughs> <laughs> this goes into a lot of different stuff because, like, uh, we've all. This is a pattern. I would also like to point out we all deal with this. Uh, yes. We've got spilled ink. We've got shards of sand. I'm dealing with whispering dark, where I can't seem to push through this first draft. Because it feels broken to me, and yes, logically it makes sense that I just need to push forward. But how can we, how can we emotionally prep ourselves to do that? How can we get ourselves through it? I think you have to give yourself permission to write badly. You just do. Yeah, and maybe you need to tell that inner editor exactly what you think of him. Ooh. <laughs> Put him in his place. <laughs> write it down. Get a voice recorder. Rant. Or write it out. Or do a five-minute exercise where you type out for five minutes why it's so bad and, you know, why you're never going to get published and all the bad stuff you think about yourself. Then at the five-minute beep, stop, put it away, and start typing Are you kidding? and working Delete. on it. That's deleted. a beautiful feeling. Delete. And then just start working on your your draft. Well, we, Shitona kind of pithily mentioned the inner editor internment camp. Isn't there something similar to that? Me trying to be smooth into the spotlight? Oh, I don't yes. Know. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, see, see what I did there? Smooth. NaNoWriMo is coming up. So, <laughs> as a municipal liaison, we have this cute little thing that we do um, the first day of NaNoWriMo. We have a little box, and it is. Um, it's your inner editor jail. And so what we do is we open the box and we have everybody put their inner editor in. And some MLs go as far as having like little cutouts or they have people make, you know, little representations of their inner editor. Little I was, yeah, I was waiting for Clark to say it. <laughs> and we take those and we have the, everyone put them in the box and then we shut the box and tape it closed. And then we put that box inside of another box. And then and we mail that box, box to ourselves. <laughs> right. No. Anyway, <laughs> the point is it's we set it aside postage. so we can write and not worry about the editing and if we did something wrong or we're a horrible writer. It has no place during NaNoWriMo, and I'd have to say it has no place at all when you're writing. That is for editing and editing only, and when you are writing your first draft, your second draft, you are not editing. Okay, so that's another interesting point that you brought up there is there's, there's writing and then there is editing. And neither of the twain shall meet. Okay. okay. So we, <laughs> you, you have to Just keep sorry. them separate. <laughs> Gotta keep well, okay. Them you know what? Your, edit, your inner editor is an employee of yours. He works for you. Part-time. Barely part-time. <laughs> He's If you don't want him there... He's not on the schedule. Send him home. Just saying. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, I'd like to expand on that just a little bit, as okay. I do. It's it's less of don't tell them to go away because you need your inner editor right. in certain times. Don't tell them to leave and never come back. Say, come back later. Right. You're, when, not, you're when, not scheduled till Tuesday at yeah, 2. Exactly. Please. So be you here can, on time. <laughs> you can give me the crippling panic attack then. All right. <laughs> but for the moment. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not very up on the whole visualization techniques that people do and stuff. But I mean, I could almost see that it might be beneficial to picture him as April's little, you know, cigar wielding. And I don't know. For some reason, it makes me feel like a New York newspaper man from like Spider Man or something with <laughs> The cigar hanging, but you know, you visualize him and say, you know what? I'll see you on Tuesday and not before. You know, I mean, I, I could just see myself, you know, maybe, maybe it would help. I don't know. <laughs> on the topic, uh, well, the, the other thing I'd like to point out is that your inner editor, if you're not careful, can edit more than just your writing, they can edit your life. Hashtag deep. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hey, now we're going to move on to the stuff that Shatona doesn't fully understand, which is more of the visualization and more fluid and ephemeral ways to deal with this. Let's go for it. And go Clark. Yay! <laughs> Cue me, I guess. You're uh, not alone. <laughs> so before <laughs> April had mentioned just sitting down and writing for five minutes, all of the nasty things that you were thinking about yourself. And this is actually really 
interesting to me because I have, I've been working with a therapist to try and deal with um, anxiety and anger and all of the other stuff that is part of just being a human being on this spinning rock. And that's actually something that came up is um, I, I have always been trying to analyze, figure out why something is happening and how I can stop it. And that's not necessarily the best approach. Uh, after a couple sessions, the metaphor that kind of came out of this was you're sort of like a, a steam engine that is some sort of machinery. And I was running around trying to cool down the pipes and analyze everything so that I could drop the pressure and fix things. And that's your ultimate goal, but sometimes you just need to open a valve and let the pressure bleed off. Yeah. So the exercise that I was given is if I'm dealing with anxiety about something or anger about something is to get someplace safe where uh, I'm alone and I can handle this. That way I don't scare or hurt other people or, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm not sure. but <laughs> <laughs> You don't want to know you what they embarrass yourself. <laughs> and then you just let it flow for a set amount of time. That's the really important part. Because you don't just want to wallow in this problem you're having and never get it done. But something I found is, one, it's painful. It's incredibly painful. When I was dealing with a specific anxiety problem of I'm not good enough for X, uh, the first time I was like, I'll give myself 10 minutes. I made it two. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened is as I was going through voicing the things over and over and over, it hurt. It sucked. But it very quickly came apparent how stupid those thoughts were. <laughs> hey, and if that's what it taints, woot! Because when it was just in the back of my mind, you know, it, it's like the annoying, the fly, you're just trying to ignore it, but then when you just deal with it for 30 seconds, you're just like, it, you don't matter. It, yeah. And it was so much easier to get Squash back to work. that bug with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, I don't know, April, do you have any other exercises or things people could try? No. No. <laughs> nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> no, I think you have to give yourself, I, like I said, you have to give yourself permission to write badly. If you absolutely have to do editing, I would suggest doing it after your writing session. Um, it's something that I do, that I go back and I, you know, I change words. I change, I, I don't change words. I change my misspellings. Um, any major grammatical errors that I see just off the bat that pop out, I'll fix those. But that's pretty much it. Um, the only thing is that while, while I'm writing, if something doesn't feel right or I'm like, oh, that's not going to go anywhere, I go back to the beginning of that section. I hit the return button so there's some white space. And then I go back to where um, to before that and start writing what I actually wanted to say. I don't get rid of the stuff I wrote that I wasn't, uh, that I'm not going to use because there's no telling where I can plug it in somewhere else or maybe I actually did like it and I can reuse it. Um, I but, use I use drafts in Scrivener to do that. It's whenever I do an editing pass on a scene or anything, I just save and do a new draft. Yeah, but this is while I'm writing, though. This is while it's not, you're writing. Yeah, that's while I'm writing. So if you absolutely have to do some kind of editing while you're writing, that's what I would suggest. Any major write, any major rewrites, I would not do well. I don't do as I'm writing. There's there's yeah. no point to it. It takes too much time. That's that's me procrastinating and not getting on with the story. Yeah, and, and that the point is, is you're writing now. You can you turn on your editing when it's time to edit. It, when that editor jumps in and just, you know, strangles you by the throat, you got it. You have to take control. You know, you wouldn't let a dog come in and attack you. You wouldn't let some stranger walk up to you and just shred you. You can't let that editor have that control. Um, a lot of times what you're saying to yourself in your mind is ridiculously irrational. It doesn't make sense, which is part of why the immersion like helped. It became very apparent that it wasn't worth freaking out over. Something else you can do with uh, what Shatona was saying is you wouldn't let somebody come up and attack you like that. Sit down and think, how would you feel if the things you were saying to yourself were being said by a stranger to somebody you love? A, a lot of this stuff, I would punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Don't, mess with, don't, don't, don't mess with my friends. So yeah. what makes it okay for you to say that to yourself? It's right. not. It's not okay. It's not okay. And if you need help from outside yourself, 
go get the help. Either go to a therapist or if that's not available, to a friend, to someone you trust. Someone trusted. Find a mentor. Find a mentor. <laughs> um, and so is that find demon? Okay, no. <laughs> Just find someone to help you understand that you aren't all the bad things that you're saying. Right. Or even have someone re read your stuff and give you actual feedback. Because yeah. sometimes that's important too. And be careful um, depending on personalities. I mean, like what Clark did with, with writing all that stuff down, I mean, it, it showed him that, that he was thinking some ridiculous things, but some people really get buried in it. I would become very prone to allowing myself to keep going when I, even if oh, I, yeah. if I snap at my husband today, I am 10 times more likely to snap at him tomorrow. I can't let myself do that today. I have to force myself not to do it. Because I very quickly pick up a very bad habit. Yeah. So we for all me, it yeah, yeah. It's so for me, I can't let myself go there, and so that's how I've learned to shut that stuff off. Because if I don't, I will stay there. Right. And so you just ugly. have to find the way that you deal with it. Best. Exactly. Keep trying. If one way isn't working, find another. And another thing I would like to point out is we've said this a couple times already, but you don't necessarily want to get rid of your internal editor. Because what I'd like to point out is as you write more. As you read more, you're going to get better at picking up when something is wrong. Yes. You may not always know exactly what it is, but you will. Or how to fix it. There is something that will feel wrong. And I think that's where all three of us are at with our books right now. We can't quite pinpoint it, but our editors are experienced enough that they're saying this isn't working. Right. And you don't want to ignore that because then we'll end up with a book that's less than we could actually produce. But during the first draft is not the time that they should be telling us that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Because the first draft is always awful. Right. It's all, it's the worst draft you're going to write. Yes. It just is. It just is. By definition. <laughs> yes, by definition. <laughs> it's like, yes! So, it can only get better! <laughs> so with that, we are at time. So go ahead and identify something that signifies what your inner editor is. Maybe a picture or a description. And share that with Wait, us later. on your social media hashtag Alive in Writing. All right. So this has been Alive in Writing. April and Shatona are confused. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's all you've got, but it's all you really need. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you. Okay.